So now that we have our database set up, we can come back to our login controller and set up this handle provider callback uh, to handle the registration correctly and to handle login as well. So this same function here, this handle, handle provider callback, it is going to handle when the user uh, registers for the first time, we're gonna provision the user. And then if they come back, let's say uh, a couple days later, well, we don't wanna provision the user again, we wanna log in the user now that we have their data. If we provision the user again, we would basically be making two records for them. So we only want that one record. So let's go ahead and abstract some of this away and add the additional components we need to to make sure that the user can be provisioned and then a user can log back in. So what I'm gonna do is create a new function down here. So uh, public function handle callback is our first one here. And I'm going to create our new function and say it is public function. And then the name of this I'm going to say is user uh, find or create. So user find or create. And we will run that. Then. So user finder creates. So the intention there is if uh, if you find the user, great, then log in that user. If you don't, great, then create the user. And that's its two goals, right? Finding user finder or create. So uh, from here, we've uh, created the new user provisioner here. We're going to take this and paste it inside of the user find or create. Uh, we have this login and then redirect to homepage. Those things are still true uh, for our user. So login the user, redirect to the homepage. That's what we're trying to get to. So now here on the user find or create, I wanna call this method. So I'm gonna say dollar sign this, which is gonna to refer to the current class. And then I'm gonna say call the user find or create. And I, what I want that to do is return the user back. And that will be either the uh, found user or the newly created user. Uh, this GitHub is, of course, going to bring in, we'll just call this GitHub user. I think that's a little bit better um, understanding of what that is then. That's going to come back with the GitHub user's information. And we need to take that GitHub user information and pass it over to the user find or create. So we'll pass it over to the uh, function we just created. So now we should be able to reference this entire object inside of it. So user create, uh, or this user find or create GitHub, we're gonna pass it here to the GitHub user. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do here is write some code to find the user. So if it does find it, great. If it doesn't, then run a conditional and create the user. So we'll say user, and then we're gonna make that used in that user model. And then we're gonna do a where clause and that where clause is going to match our provision uh, ID or uh, provider ID. Can't remember what we called it. We'll go back to create tables and it is a provider ID. So we are going to paste in the provider ID. So find the user where the provider ID is equal to uh, the GitHub user ID. And then when this is done, we're gonna say find the first instance. All right, so that should go and find the user and find the first instance of it. And then if it doesn't find the user, so we're gonna say if not user, meaning it did not find the user, well then uh, we can create a new user and then we have name, email, but we also wanna do that provider ID and that should be the same as the GitHub ID, which is this value here. Uh, oh, sorry, GitHub. Uh, we probably, uh, yeah, let's change this because we changed it. So we'll say GitHub user all the way through. And then this value here is ID. Yeah, get, that should probably be get ID based on what we're referencing. Okay, now I'm going to go and check this and see if it works. Let's hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. It's going to happen, right? I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do up top is print R the GitHub user, just to make sure I'm like referencing things correctly inside the object. The next thing, it's gonna go and look for this user. And then uh, when that's done, 
uh, if that works, it's going to skip over this. And basically what I wanted to do is just return the user, which at this point now is going to be my actual Laravel eloquent user model, which is the value here uh, for user. So if that's successful, I want to print out that user. Eventually we'll log in that user somewhere in here to, uh, to make sure it's working. So let's go back to our page, click refresh. We'll say login GitHub. And there's the first one there. So we printed our, uh, the user is, here's the token, here's the refresh token, the expires and the ID. So make sure uh, that you're referencing the ID and not the token um, as uh, these tokens are going to change uh, based on uh, every time you log in. So every time you log in with GitHub, you're gonna get a new token back uh, based on the authentication, but this ID is not going to change. So uh, consider that uh, you need to store the ID specifically. Sometimes other things to look out for are uh, some users don't have their name and some of this other information filled in. And I came across this with name actually, where a user had an email address, but for some reason they didn't have, maybe it was a nickname or name they didn't have. And that caused the system uh, for me to basically fake a name for them so that the system would work. So, uh, just make sure that you're checking on those things and you're uh, putting a value. Now down here it says app user object. So it created the user and now it's returning back that object. Now if I go into my SQL Pro and I open this up and click refresh, I'll click on my users table. You'll see there's the provider ID and there is uh, the name, email address, the password of course is blank, the remember token is blank. And you can see when that was created at and updated at. Okay, so that's working. Let's go and see now if it goes and runs the second time here. I'm going to turn this off now. And it shouldn't need to provision, because I don't need to print it R. It shouldn't need to provision the user again. So I should only have just that one user. So let's go ahead and make sure we're good with that. I'm going to click back, click refresh, and then log in with GitHub. And there's that user object back again. Let's go into our database and click refresh. And you can see we didn't add a new record because it matched up with that provider ID. So it just said, skip this, let's just return the user. Great. So now we have successfully provisioned a user in the system. In the next episode, we're going to take it a step further now and log in that user now that they've been provisioned uh, and actually create a session for them.